they're not willing to look outside of the box. I know after working a job for 15 to 30 years, I would probably panic a little bit myself being told that I'm going to be laid off. But that's what today's show is all about. It's all about how to get a job. And we're going to help you think outside of the box. Remember, at the end of the show, we're also going to be offering a free book on how to get a job. So stay tuned and get your pen and paper together. Welcome to One on One with Dr. C.J. Matthews. My name's Tony Owens. You are watching The Real Deal, Real Talk real questions with real answers. And here he is, the man himself, Dr. <laughs> C.J. Matthews. How you doing, brother? Hey, Tony, I'm doing great. Yeah. I'm doing real well, grateful, thankful, excited about the topic today and our guest. I have so many people who come to me on a weekly basis who uh, desire employment. And I believe the rap that people don't want to work is not true. Uh, what really people want to know is how do they get reconnected or connected. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm seeing much more than I'm seeing people who want to hand out, people who are shiftless and lazy, mm -hmm. and people who, who don't have a desire to take care of themselves. I just think today, um, uh, the skill set, the, the reality of what, worked, what, what workforce is demanding is just a little different than in the past. And the young people coming out don't know. And the people who've been out there especially if they've been in a place for any length of time, they, they don't know the game anymore. Yeah. Well, it's amazing because all the information that we're going to be sharing today is information that is exactly what you said. It's going to help people that have been in the market for a while, that have been working. It's going to help uh, younger people that are just getting into the market. And there's a lot of information that we're going to be giving out. Our guest today, Ms. Tiffany Lardamita. She's a friend of the show. She's been with us before. Uh, she has bought this information to share with you. And just to give you a heads up of what we're going to be talking about, and I've got to read this off a little bit. An up-close look at the top 50 mistakes that job seekers are making and how to avoid those mistakes when doing that job search. Uh, tips and techniques on improving your mindset. Resume and career search presentation. Uh, the tried and true top skill services of success how to get into the job market. Last but not least, a new approach on an old problem <laughs> that guarantees you more interviews and more opportunities. Ms. Tiffany Lardamita, welcome back to the show. How are you, girl? I'm great. Thank you, Tony, for having me again. Well, you know, I'm glad we had the conversation over the phone. You know, I was watching the news and I was watching how all the cutbacks in the city, and I said, these people are probably panicking right now. So you and I mm -hmm. had the conversation about, well, you know, Tony, I've got that book, mm -hmm. so we can really help them out. So to have you back on the guest, as a guest on our show, is a pleasure, and the information that people are going to be getting. Once again, you are going to be receiving a free book at the end of the show, so have your pen and paper together and ready to go. Dr. Matthews, with all the layoffs in the city and cutbacks, I'm sure that your phone has been ringing off the hook. <laughs> I mean, people are concerned about what's going on. Are they calling you more for guidance, or what are they calling you about? <clears throat> really, first, for prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then secondly, you know, do I have a hookup? <laughs> Can I help them get a job? <laughs> Will I write a letter of, of, uh, of uh, a character letter and reference letters? And, uh, you know, I had a chance to sit with the mayor, I had a chance to sit with the county exec, had a chance to sit with the administrative judge, and, and no one is excited about these layoffs. Uh, there's uh, hundreds of teachers being laid off, and we focus on Cleveland, but there's several hundred going to be laid off in other districts around the uh, region. These are people with some significant skills, um, but I'd be interested to hear what Tiffany has to say. Do the skills they have match the skills that are needed? Um, I mean, you know, it's like me, I'm a pastor, you know, I preach, so, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody said to me tomorrow, you're laid off, and I'm like, wow, what skills do I have, you know? Mm -hmm. Had to sit with my uh, oldest son because he's never had a job, and he's in college and played sports all his life, and he wrote his first resume. You know, I don't have a resume. Yeah, you have a resume. we got to think about what you've done in your life. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter, who understands this stuff a little bit, helped him put together his first resume. So. Uh, we're talking about a very tenuous time in the life of a person, especially if they've been self-sustaining or really seeking real independence. A lot of times people say they're grown. 18 year old, my 18 year old mm -hmm. son grown. thinks he's grown. Mm -hmm. I say, no son, you are grown, but the problem is you're not independent. Mm -hmm. Still spending my money. <laughs> well, I, I'm just curious, when you, when you say when you sit down with the city leaders and you sit down with the mayor, I would think that you guys are sitting down because you're having this big, powerful meeting about coming up with a plan on some information that at, at least 
all these people, the, from the teachers to the firemen to the police department to the governmental workers, what type of plan besides the pink slip are they, are, are they giving them? Are they giving them some type of road map to a direction. We're going to be given a road map today, but I'm saying along beside us, besides one-on-one, -on -one, what's the city doing? As helpful as those things are, and there's always an exit strategy for employees. Um, 30, 20 some years ago when I was uh, transitioned out of a job for downsizing, uh, they gave us uh, soft skills. They brought in a company to work with us, and, and that's okay. That's compassionate. But at the end of the day, I want to leave this job today and I want this job tomorrow because I don't want any time between working now and working then. Wow. All right, you guys have been waiting on this. I mean, it's time to get into the guts. It's time to get into the real deal. <laughs> real talk, real questions, real answers. Tiffany, looking at the lack of networking that people have not done mm -hmm. or have done, how important is that for people to get started? What about networking should they know? The first thing that they should know is that 70% of jobs come through your network. 70% of people are getting hired through their network. So what that means is that you should spend most of your time in your network rather than searching online on the job boards, going in the newspaper. We remember when the newspaper used to have pages and pages of job listings. Not anymore. The way that people find jobs is through their network by, because they're tapping into the hidden job market. You know that when a job has been, uh, when a, a position comes available, for that two week period, usually that job is available, but it's not listed anywhere. And the only people that know about it are the ones that are in the department where that job was or in that company. So for that two week window, you have a good opportunity to get in there before all of the other job seekers who are on CareerBuilder or Monster.com or anything like that but you won't know about that job unless you're using your network. So it, it is, it's so important for people to tap into that before they get out of work. Well, just listening to you talk about this, and this is not even a question on my page because <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing uh -huh. my audience and, and people that are listening to you right now. Mm -hmm. On this show, we always talk a lot about fear. Yes. And I think fear just stepped into what you were saying because people are not familiar with the lingo of even networking. Right. So how do they get over that fear? Let's give them that first step. How do you get past that first step of fear, okay. getting into the networking process? Well, I talk to my students about this all of, all of the time. And really, when we think of networking, we think of it as, I have to go out, I have to shake hands with people, I have to give them my business card or something like that. But it doesn't have to be that serious. Networking is just talking to people. You talk to the woman in the grocery store who's in the, you know, the line behind you, you never know, there may be something at her company. You you talk to your kids, the people at your kids' school, or people in the church, or wherever, these people are a part of your network. So instead of thinking of it as something all super professional, think of it as I need to just talk to as many people as possible to build my network. So all you're basically doing is just making friends. You're making friends. How easy is that? No, it's got to be easy. <laughs> yes. Another thing that a lot of people, which I think that probably 80% of the homes have computer systems. Mm -hmm. in their home. Mm -hmm. And I know in your book you talk about an online presence. Yes. Let's touch on that for a minute. Okay. It is a big deal to have an online presence nowadays. A lot of times when you apply for a job, the employer, before they even call you, will Google your name. They want to know what you are and what you're all about. I know that for the last open position that I had available, there was someone that I really, really wanted to meet based on his resume. And when I Googled him, did not like what I found and he wow. ended, and it ended up in the junk pile. So you have to make sure that not only if is your online presence that you have an online presence, but also that you have one that accurately reflects who you really are. So you're saying that you wanted to meet somebody. Yes. You Googled that person and what you saw after seeing what you saw, you no longer were yes. interested in that person. Yes. Wow. I know. <laughs> Sad for him because he could have had a job. I liked him from his resume, but no, not after seeing that. And more and more employers are doing that. Some employers are even checking people's Facebook pages. So that night that you went out hanging out with your friends and they caught those embarrassing pictures of you, yeah, they, your employers are seeing that. Um, people will go on to your LinkedIn to see who you're connected with. And if you are connected with someone that they know, they may 
want to talk to you a little bit more. Um, people will go on to YouTube or to other social media outlets and just see if you have a presence, if you're there. And it makes a really, really, really big difference if you have a flawless online presentation versus having no online presence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got to back up for a second because I'm, I'm on Facebook and I, I get a lot of response for one-on-one -on, -one on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you just made a statement that you've got to watch how you present yourself mm -hmm. on Facebook because everything you put out there is for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. So those conversations and people that you even invite into your Facebook world, the vulgar language and things that they say actually represent you. Yes, they do. And I've seen and I've heard about where employers doing the interview process while you're sitting there talking will go on Facebook <laughs> and pull you up <laughs> yes. during that conversation to see what type of person you are. Mm -hmm. Is that right? It is absolutely right. And even when you think that your privacy settings are set to private, some employers have ways to get through that. So really, you need to start clearing out your friends, <laughs> I say. <laughs> Clear out those ones that aren't going to help you in your job search. All right, I want people to think about that for a second. Dr. Matthews, mm -hmm. when you talk to people about having a a personal mission or reason to be ready to find this job besides a paycheck. Right. How do you counsel that person to prepare themselves? Well, I ask them to explore the things they like, the things they're passionate about, the things that they've experienced that, okay, I may not know everything, may not be totally passionate right now, but wow, when I was over there, when I heard this, when I saw this, I was interested in that. So interest become an opportunity. So I just help them do a little exploring because people come to me all the time and they say, can you help me get a job? I say, what do you do? I'll do anything. Well, I've never seen mm -hmm. a employer put out a anything <laughs> application to say, you know, this job requires anything. Now mm -hmm. at the bottom they'll say, after they've given you a hundred things, they'll say, and anything. <laughs> so that just means what I say do. But, um, so, you know, you got to help people hone in on something that they're either interested in, passionate about, something they can learn, something they can develop a skill for, something that they've had in their past and or been associated with someone doing. And, uh, and so I, um, I try to help people explore those kind of things. Well, they should also be proud of all the accomplishments that they make within, within the church itself because it speaks about who they are oh, no. and that person putting church that on the resume. Church is a great place to volunteer and develop skills mm -hmm. because we, we have so many things that we do there uh, throughout the week that the skill sets we can impart to people, the learnings they can take away. And, and, and again, I challenge people who are unemployed, come down here and work during the week, mm -hmm. develop your skills, because when you say to an employer, well, no, I was off three weeks, but I volunteered at my church, and at my church I did fouling, I answered the phone, I was a, 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 a person to do whatever those things are, at least the employer said, wow, you mean to say that while you were away, I had a young man a few weeks ago who's formerly incarcerated, only out, uh, out of uh, prison a few months, and I met a guy and told him, sir, I'd like to learn your business. I don't need a job. I need a job, but I don't want a job right now. I want to learn your business, and I work for free. Oh, wow. And the guy hired him, even so some other mm -hmm. people were uncomfortable with the fact that he was a reentry person in, the, in his company. He hired him anyway, and he's working right now, making a very, 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 very good wage. Wow. Mm -hmm. And learning a very good skill. Right. One of the other things that I think that by you being uh, a leader and a pastor in a church, that when people come to you, you have people like myself, I always speak very highly of myself, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no question, but there are people that don't speak very highly of themselves, that right. have to learn how to do that. Absolutely. Do you mm -hmm. counsel in them in that as well? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, here's what I help people understand, is that, you know, I have the kind of resume that I could send it just about anywhere in the world and there would be something said. But the reason why I'm as confident as I am is not because of my resume. God loved me enough and valued me enough to send his son to die for me. I got so much worth that it would, heaven would respond with a gift like Jesus just for me. So helping people build their self-esteem is extremely important, especially if you got people who have been beat down, beat down, beat down. Mm -hmm. And if people's self-identity is tied to their ability to provide for themselves, for their family, and they lose their job, that's a big hit in your self-esteem. Wow, let them hang on that thought for a minute. We're talking about how you're gonna get a job. 
We'll be right back. 